Hey, what's up guys? I'm Andrew Bacon. So we are literally in the middle of updating this blank wall on our main bedroom. Hey, what's up, babe? And we are gonna turn this wall into an awesome fireplace. So my wife found these awesome ideas on Pinterest, as usual. And so we are about to go grab materials. We've already drawn up the designs. I've ordered an awesome electric insert, and I cannot wait to show you how we're gonna do this. So check out how we do it on this episode of Field Treasure Designs. So the first step is get a ton of two by fours because I'm going to frame it out using these. And so once I got them all unloaded, I was good to go and it was time to take them to the miter station and get them cut. After I got my lengths cut, I cut my spacers down and to make it easier, I added a stop block here so I could cut them one after the other without having to think about it. So once those were all cut, we were good to go. And then I grabbed my Craig pocket hole jig to start drilling in holes because that's the main way I'm going to assemble the frame of the fireplace. And done, okay, cool. Assembly was pretty easy. I laid out my post and then I just attached my spacers with pocket hole screws. And so I just kind of spaced them out, kind of wherever I felt like was good. And then once I had one side done, I flipped it and then I attached the other side and went down the row. I had to have my helper come and hold it though while I was leaning out over the table to keep it in camera. But yeah, we got it all done. And next was to cut the wider supports. So I went back to my miter station and cut them down. At this point in time, I didn't know exactly how many I would need, so I just cut a couple. I knew I needed some on the back against the wall, and then I needed some on the front, and I'll explain that here in a minute. Now I'm pausing the frame construction to go up back to the bedroom, and I'm gonna cut out the footprint of the frame of the fireplace so that it can sit directly on the subfloor. And so I started by measuring it out. I have a piece of wood here that's helping me kind of get the right measurement. And then I just go along with a really sharp carpet knife and cut it out. Thankfully, my four foot level really helped create a nice straight edge. And boom, done. The next day I had to go back and cut out the carpet pad. So I used the knife again and there was just a few staples holding it down. And so once I had it cut, I just pulled it right out. Next, I used my multi-tool to cut off the carpet tacking so then I can grab my little pry bar and pry up the rest of them. There's a few little pieces here that were easy to come out. And then once I got to the other side, I grabbed my multi-tool again to cut it off there. And then now we're all clear. Next, using my multi-tool, I cut one line on the right side and then I go and cut one line on the left side to kind of release that trim board, which by the way, the multi-tool is so handy and I will link to my preferred model below. And then once I get it cut out, I grabbed my knife again to score along the trim piece. That cuts away any caulk or paint that might keep it stuck together. And then once I get that loosened up, I grab my mini pry bar and then I'm able to easily pry that trim piece out. So I just work my way down the line and I'm able to pull it right out. Sweet. All right, now the fun begins. So I grab each of my sides and I line them up and luckily they stayed in place long enough for me to just make sure. And so you're gonna see as I assemble this and I put it together that I kind of do it a little bit at a time just to make sure that all the measurements are right. So I grab the bottom backboard there that I'm going to use to tie it all together. And so wanted to make sure it fits. Once I figured out it looked good and I just screw it in with my pocket hole screws. So I get the bottom secure and then after I secure the bottom, I grab another one of my back boards and I was debating either on the top or the middle, but I ended up going in the middle and I held it all together and yeah, just screwed it in and now this thing is starting to stabilize, which is awesome. Once I got all the back parts done and I also screwed them into the wall, I used two and a half inch deck screws. For some reason I didn't film that, I don't know why. And so I found the studs and I anchored them into the framing in the wall. And so just don't forget that if you're taking this step by step. So then now I am assembling the front part because I need the front to frame out for the electric fireplace. And then I also need some good wood in the front for the shiplap to attach to in certain parts. And so here I'm just screwing them all in and getting it done. Okay, now I'm up at the top and now you can see I've done a few other boards and I'm adding one more here because I want to be able to have the ability to mount a TV maybe down the road. So I'm adding extra blocking here so that I've got some good wood to attach that TV mount to if needed. 
Okay, now I'm adding some shiplap, but before we move on, I want to point out I do have some vertical boards that I attached there, those two by fours. I wanted to add extra frame and stability. I also needed more wood for the shiplap to attach to as it works its way down, as you can see there as I'm nailing it in. But then also that blocking helps to have extra places to screw in, maybe a TV mount or something like that. So yeah, I spared you showing me uh, cutting the shiplap boards. I'm using really nice pine nickel gap shiplap. I decided to go a little bit nicer quality on this build. And yeah, pretty much I'm cutting them to their proper width and I'm just mounting them and making sure they're level as we go. A big part of doing it right is making sure that first board is level and then you're good to go. So I just worked my way down and go from there. I paused my shiplap install because I wanted to add a receptacle behind the TV. So I traced it out and then I used my multi-tool to cut it out. Take a look at my face while I'm cutting this out. How funny is that? <laughs> All right, done. And then I just hammered it out and made some space for the blue box. And then, yeah, just stuck it in there. One thing I didn't show you is it does require two screws to finish tightening it up. For some reason, I didn't film that. But yeah, we're all good. Then I went down to the bottom where I'm going to draw power from. Thankfully, there was already an outlet right behind where the fireplace is going to go. So this is going to be perfect. I'll be able to plug in the fireplace, but then I'm also going to be able to tap into this and run wire up to my new outlet for my potential TV down the road. Oh, and by the way, the power is turned off, so don't freak out. I already turned it off. So here I'm drilling a hole to be able to run my Romex wire out the back just like a normal outlet box or receptacle box. And then once I get the hole punched, I grab my pull sticks to feed them up through just to see if it's gonna hit any resistance. And sure enough, there is some blocking in the wall there. So that means the cable cannot go all the way up through, which is no big deal. So I pull it out and I'm gonna run my Romex right up the wall as far as it can go. And so what this means is it's just gonna pop out a little bit earlier than I would have liked um, up above here. And so I run it all the way up until I can't do it anymore. And then we go up and I punched a hole and pull out the Romex and there we go. And so you can see I already punched another hole out there and was kind of, I made a mistake, but this is behind everything. You're never gonna see it. And so yeah, there's the new wire for my new electrical box. So I go down below and this is just wiring it up. And so you can check out how I wire in this receptacle real quick. And then once I get this done, I'm gonna head up and wire in the top. Okay, that's it. I resecure the outlet and then I did the same thing above on the fireplace for my new outlet. Now I'm hanging the mount bracket for my mantle. So this is just a little bit less width than the actual mantle will be. I found the studs inside my frame and as you can see I had already pre-drilled the holes. So now all I have to do is get it level and secure it. <laughs> I also added a few shorter scrap pieces just to give a little bit more meat to mount the mantle to. Then I hung my mantle up. By the way, I'm gonna have a completely separate tutorial on how I made my mantle, so be sure to check that out. I had also pre-drilled the holes, and so here I am just driving in the two inch deck screws to the top. I'll then fill those holes, and it will just float there and look awesome. Thankfully, the fireplace came in the mail, so I was able to get cracking on that part of the project. I'll have a separate video that details the unboxing and the review, so be sure to check that out. After I got it unpackaged, I was able to slide it into place. And it really is that easy. All you have to do is make sure your surface is nice and flat and squared up, and then we are good to go. After the dry fit was successful, I took out the front support to add a little bit of extra blocking underneath the surface. So I got that screwed in, reattached the front board, and it's ready to hold the fireplace insert. Next, I cut two two by fours for each side of the fireplace insert. So I'm attaching them with pocket hole screws. This will give something for the shiplap to attach to. After that, I grabbed a piece of scrap shiplap. You can see this one my kids have decorated. I just wanted to fit it behind the frame of the fireplace to make sure I had enough clearance for the shiplap to go around the fireplace. And as you can see, it's gonna work perfectly.
As you can imagine, there were some custom fit pieces. And so after measuring real carefully, doing really careful cuts, I was able to get the right notch cut out of one board. And so it fits right in there and now I can secure it. Then I had to do the same thing on the bottom to measure correctly and cut carefully and then slide it in with the notch. And ah, it worked on the first try, which was awesome. Then I just had to make one cut for the last one. So now all the shiplap is done and I am tracing a floor vent that I'm going to install on each side of the fireplace. This allows airflow in case we decide to use the heat mechanism so that the vent allows air to travel into it. And I chose this model because it's easy to slide in like a floor vent and I can pull it out if I ever need access behind the fireplace. Now that the hole's cut, I just grab the vent and slide it in. So. Yeah, it's that simple. It's just snug enough to hold it in and then I can pull it out if I ever need to access it again. Boom. Next, I installed the baseboard around the bottom of the fireplace. Then I installed the vertical trim pieces on each side. I left a little bit hanging on the outside so that I could do a quarter round on the inside as you'll see in a second. I then attached the top and I wanted to go with a little craftsman style so I had it hanging over the edge a little bit. And the last thing to do was to paint. So my awesome wife rocked it with the painting. You can see next to that blue tape along the side is the quarter round that I added. I forgot to film it, but I attached those on the insides. And then I took off the mantle so that we could paint all around it. You can also see the outlet there that I installed for behind a future TV. And so, yeah, there it is. And after my wife painted it, I put everything back and it's done. There it is, our brand new bedroom shiplap fireplace with an electric insert, a floating mantle, the ability to mount a TV if we want it. And man, this project has been awesome. I hope it was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.